Monday morning and you're in the charts in your own right. This must be something you've been dreaming of for some time. Yes. Yeah, it's really exciting. Um, yeah, you just, you just never know, do you? When, you? when you put your music out there, people are going to like it. You just, you do what um, what comes from your heart and um, you just hope that people like it. So to, to have kind of have it in the charts is sort of like the the dream, really. It's a dream come true. So Yeah. And in your own right, I mean, I've just been doing some research on your background and everything I've seen has been uh, so and so and so featuring Anna Marie Johnson. So to be in your own right uh, as a name chart artist, uh, this is the, the plateau of your achievement in some ways. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's actually been a lifelong ambition, really, Clive, to to do it. Um, but I've always prioritised other people's projects. Um, so I've been talking about doing an EP probably for about 10 10 years or so and then I actually wrote this song and the rest of the EP track six years ago actually um so yeah so they they were written back then then lots of things happened in between we had covid um so it's taken then you know from the point of writing to actually getting them out and ready um and obviously doing it all myself which is a lot of hard work and yes. have to learn a lot and put a lot of things in place um and i just haven't had the capacity so it's just the right time but it's been a long time you know it's been a long time coming so, so you've, really, really... you've lived with the songs for all that time so you obviously get right inside them when you're performing now yeah yeah i mean one of the tracks on the ep has been rewritten we wrote it and then rewrote it last year but this track it's the weird thing is this track was the first track that we did in the studio and we did it on day one and it was just practically done in, in a day from conception. And I had just had like the the little hook, which was, um, I will wait here for you love forever and ever and ever. That's all I had before I got in the studio. And then literally, I think he started putting the beat down and then I just wrote the rest of the lyrics and it just came together really, really really easily really quickly it was just um very very easy to do and uh and it, it felt like um well it just felt like a big sort of um a big achievement really you know to, to do that on the first day we'd never met before yeah um it just clicked and it just all came together so easily and quickly um so there was a good vibe yeah, the chemistry obviously helps significantly in music, doesn't it, Anna Marie? Yeah. I've seen this a number of cases where people who never actually cross paths together, so that the meeting of the minds generates a sort of chemistry that sort of takes you on to another level. Yeah, definitely. And I, I'm very much a believer of that. I, I don't like to work in a silo. I don't like to work on my own because I think that the excitement comes from that connection with another artist and how you create something completely new together. Um, well, I, I can't do it on my own anyway, because I'm not a producer, but I don't think I'd want to, even if I had those skills, you know, I think it just something magical comes when you connect more creatives together than just the one. Yeah, um, and I, I've heard it a number of times, you mentioned there having a, a producer as a, somebody to bounce ideas off of and somebody who's got uh, skills in a different area, Anna-Marie, so it helps you to actually fine-tune, doesn't it, what you're doing? Absolutely, yeah, definitely. Um, and also bring new ideas, you know, um, take things in a, in, a diff, in a different sort of direction um, that you might not have envisaged. Um, that's where the magic happens, I think, it, you know, of, of working collaboratively yeah which yeah. I just yeah I love doing and and I think like you say when you meet a particular person that you can do that with you sort of hold on to them you know and you think yeah yeah we we work well together so we did those tracks six years ago and we've been back in the studio actually in October and started writing another couple of tracks so I'd like to do another EP next year um so yeah, working working again together. So and we also work together quite a bit through the soulful house stuff that I do as well. 
Um, so that's nice. Yeah. I was thinking, having tracked through the various things on the Apple site, where most of your music's there in snippet form, uh, you yeah. seem to have taken a slight change of direction with a, in a more so directly soulful mode with, with Waiting for Your Love, which wasn't quite so evident in your previous tracks, which is more sort of da dance or harder, uh, harder music orientated. Is that a conscious move? Well, yeah. I mean, my roots have always been in soul music. So yeah. I used to be in the Dry Sabels drives the bone soul family so i sang with them i wrote um one of the tracks on the um recipe of life album which is called but you which is a ballad so that's very very soulful um and that's really where i i sort of originated it was only kind of producers coming to me and saying oh would you sing on our tracks that got me into house music in the first place it wasn't kind of a conscious decision for me to get into house music oh okay um, that's interesting I sort of fell into that so i sort of came into that um in an unexpected way and uh the sort of first big hit i had was the remy track um live life free and that got to number three in the track source charts and was one of the top tracks of 2017 in in soulful house um and that were that came about because i was working with ziggy on this um on this ep and it was basically an exchange so i did some stuff for them and he did some stuff for me so um, that's how that came about and then obviously from that more people asked me to do to work with them um so it's kind of coming back to my roots really yeah um yeah rather than me changing to go oh i want to do soul music now soul mu music's always been the number one oh, love that's that's reassuring in a way because i mean you you sound there's a comfort factor in this as well as regards how you how comfortable you feel when you're singing a song and there's certainly a, a belonging factor in waiting for your love i'm not saying you didn't belong in the other areas but if you've been invited and you're doing it almost as a job there's kind of a different chemistry is there not yeah but i, I mean I, as a singer i think i try and do different things as well i like the challenge of doing new things and different things and i don't want to just keep doing the same thing i want to work with different people and sort of stretch myself in different ways so this year I had a number one with um i don't know if you've heard it um a cover of wanna be down which was a brandy 90s brandy track yeah and i did the journeyman and that did really really well um and yeah it's done fantastically well it's, it's the, the, one of the top 200 tracks of this year as well and i love doing that because i love 90s r&b you know that's kind of yeah. my era um you can hear a bit of that in the quite a bit of that in the ep as well um but it, it was fun to do i enjoyed it it, it shows a different start, side of my voice i think waiting for your love probably shows me in my most authentic light yeah. and enables me to sort of show my skills vocally more than what you get the opportunity in dance music because dance music yeah. is so fast paced yeah um, that you don't get to see the subtle sort of nuances and different techniques that you can use as a singer as what you can do in slower music. And Absolutely, yeah, music. yeah. I must ask so you, I think, saw in your bios, do you work, you was a support for <clears throat> for Sheik and Niall Rogers uh, a little while ago. That must have been quite an enlightening experience for you. That was amazing. Yeah, that was just I've got two favourite gigs. One was headlining Ronnie Scott's with Dry Spone in 2012 and mm. then the, the support slot at the O2 with Sheik and R. Rogers. And that was just incredible because we also got invited on stage with them during good times. So we were, you know, there. But it was 3,000 capacity. The, the atmosphere was incredible. And just Niall was lovely, so down to earth and sweet. Um, and yeah, we, we, everyone was lovely in the band. And then I kept in touch with Jerry, the bass player, and I've done some recording in New York at Avatar Studios with him and some writing. And also he has done some bass for me on a track, a disco track that I've written as well. So, um, you know, it's continued to have, um, uh, you know, friendships out of it as well. So yeah. it was really great. Yeah, he's amazing. He's just incredible, isn't he? And I. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, yeah. So the the net value. The band. Yeah. Probably, probably the best band I've ever seen live. Actually, I think Sheik they're just world class, aren't they? So. <laughs> well, that's it. The uh, benchmark of, of quality from that era, wasn't it? Really. Mm. Yeah.
Uh, speaking of which, uh, Bench Mode will probably be the current era, which you are now becoming Anne Marie. <laughs> like you're a chart star now, and I'm honored to have this conversation with you <laughs> this oh, time. You. Little old me, and you're the big star, uh, though a modest big star, it has to be said. Um, oh. what, what's next live wise for you, Anne Marie? Well, live wise, um, I, I'm I'm sort of more in the studio at the moment. Um, hopefully, some, some new stuff will come up next year. Um, I also do um sort of covers stuff as well so i've got a sold out gig next week um in northamptonshire which is where i live and then after that yeah just looking forward to next year um i'd like to do more I've, I've, um you know obviously have to travel for the gigs yeah <laughs> um I'm happy, to do, I'm happy to get back out on the road um so hopefully some new stuff will come out in relation to you know my original stuff now yeah um, which would be really nice to do um because like i say i've been doing more studio based work um the this last year which is it's been quite nice actually <laughs> it's nice to have a change yeah. um it's quite it's quite tiring when you're out on the road um I can imagine. But yeah yeah especially when you've got a busy busy family life but um yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully getting some some cool gigs in next year um and get to get to sing my stuff live because that's actually life performances where i'm probably in my um mm. my element you know yeah. that that's i love live performance i did a really cool gig this year um in september with a band called the jazz colossus big band which is a uh, i think it was a 20 piece oh, yeah. and that was funk and soul and disco and i got to yeah. sing covers um but got to do um beyonce's crazy in love which i've never sang before um that was really cool with the big band um and uh uh, ain't no body shaka cars got to do all those with you know with brilliant sounds so it'd be lovely to perform with them again and also this summer i did some um again this is covers but it was ibiza anthems and club classics yeah with the ibiza orchestra so that was out doing sort of big gigs in front of sort of four thousand people doing sort of the old 90s um club classics so hopefully i'll get to do some more of those gigs this year that will be fun as well that must give you some degree of confidence and the inspiration of the chemistry of performing with a live audience is significant, isn't it, in the music industry? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's what it's all about, really. I think, you know, if you can... Um, it. To, I mean, I've had it where, you know, you're singing in front of a crowd and they're singing your song back to you and it's just like, wow, you know, it's a connection. Yeah. It's not like, you know, when you play... When you do house music, it's quite strange because you're in the studio and then it goes off and it has its life and you don't really see it unless you go out to nightclubs and, you know, and, and go in and do all that, which I haven't really done this year. So you don't sort of get connection with it. But if you're singing your songs live, yeah, then that's where it's, that's, that's the enjoyment, you know, um, because it's seeing how other people react to it and, and seeing other people enjoying themselves. I've seen lots of videos this year of people listening to want to be down out in Croatia on boat parties and, you know, here then I'd be there and it's like, Oh, that looks amazing. I wish I was there. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to get myself out, won't I, a bit more, I think, so I can sort of um, connect with the, the audience is a bit yeah. more which would be nice. when time permits when time permits uh, meanwhile you. the ep is out when anna marie i think i think we were talking i think it's going to be early next year we'd like to do a second single there's four tracks on the ep yeah um we'd like to do a second single release before we we release the whole thing um that's the plan currently so i i think sort of maybe february march Okay. Um, it's, not, it's not set in stone yet, um, but obviously, yeah, um, I have to say as well, uh, if anyone wants to buy the EP or buy the, the, the current single, then I do have a band camp um, because people have been saying to me, oh, how, how can I purchase this? Um, obviously, you can hear it on Spotify, you can hear it on Apple Music, on YouTube Music, but if people want to own a copy, they can buy it directly from source and it's on Bandcamp, so um and the ep will be on there as well when it's released yeah. um but that, that's going to be yeah early next year we'll say i'll update you so you can um let people know um 
because I don't think it's been confirmed yet. <laughs> well, you've answered my next question, which is where can people buy this music? So you want some income from this. You don't do this to make a living, Anna Marie. So you're, you're out there. You want people to buy the stuff rather than just it, listen. It's nice that they listen to it, but they need to have the copy of the record, don't they? It would be great because, um, you know, independent artists, we don't get any funding. So we fund it all ourselves. We yep. fund all our own PR. We fund our own studio time. We fund our producers we fund the music we do everything and we don't really get any much back at all um so yeah obviously it makes a big difference um, and Bandcamp's great because if you buy it from itunes i don't know how much you get and if you listen to it on spotify you know the artist doesn't really get anything <laughs> um, but if you buy it from Bandcamp, the artist does actually get some money from it they take a cut and then we get some money from it so obviously that will help us um to you know um i think this is why it's such a difficult industry because we we have to self-fund and we don't really make money but we're not doing it to make money we're doing it because that's our love and our passion um but it's yeah it's it's difficult because you have to fund it but yes so i'd really appreciate anyone who wants to buy it or and own it that to um support me and um purchase from band camp that would be fantastic please that's that's where we'll be going that's the point of this interview is to promote you as an independent artist with some superb music and to get some money in your pocket while we have music in our ears anna marie johnson yes. it's been a pleasure talking with you you're a delightful oh. lady to talk with with a lovely voice and now a chart artist as well what can the world be asking for <laughs> oh thank you no thank you so much for your support i really appreciate it clive and thank you for playing the track and supporting the music that you know means a lot my pleasure i'll be opening the show again with this coming sunday anna marie so there you go thank you very much i shall be in <laughs> okay so it's for your time nice talk with you hope that gets better soon thanks so much bye, bye.